big spicy 3090s are real. CDs are going up in sales and a man wanted to tape CPUs everywhere. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. We're going to start off today talking about how there are some more indication that NVIDIA is planning on releasing an incredibly spicy RTX 4090. This is a rumor that's been floating out there for a little bit with reports that the next generation high-end flagship card is going to be between 600 and 800 watts. And we have yet another well-known leaker coming out and saying that the 600 watt TGP might actually be confirmed, which means that they would be very high-end cards, especially currently where we're sitting with the RTX 3090, which is nowhere near this amount. There are a few cards out there like the RTX 3090 Strix from Asus, which has a TGP of 480 watts. But again, this would just be another 25% step up, which would make it so that NVIDIA has to have an even beefier cooler than we've seen on the RTX 3090. And all the add-in board partners would have to create a more substantial cooler as well. There's some speculation that NVIDIA might go the route of AMD, which is make a closed liquid cool system loop on the actual GPU to help dissipate some of those higher heat numbers, especially with that 600 watt setup. But regardless, it's looking like the next generation is going to consume a whole lot of power. But you know what consumes a whole lot of power today? Money. And you want more money for your RTX 3090? Well, maybe you should head on over to GTC towards the end of the month and you can get a signed RTX 3090 by Jensen Wong himself, who is signing RTX 3090s, not RTX 3090 Ti's for whatever reason, even though they're supposed to launch at the end of the month, he's signing the old flagship, not the new flagship. Are we ever getting the 3090 Ti's? What do you think? Probably not. Why are you so pessimistic? But pessimism can't invade the crypto stocks. Look at Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin up 0.3% to be at 38,817. Just it's it's doing all right. Ethereum down 0.63% to be at 2539. It's doing like all not good. And Dogecoin down 0.56% to be at 11.22 cents. Not quite as good as you would expect. But what's doing better than I would have ever even thought is CD sales. According to the RIAA, they are coming out with their numbers for the music industry and how sales are going. CDs are up 21% in revenue. 21% to $584 million. Who was still buying CDs? When was the last time you bought a CD? What's a CD? CD's nuts. Got him. What's that mean? <laughs> it's an HR violation. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised by the fact that vinyl has been going up in sales. It's up 61% in 2021, which is absolutely crazy. But digital downloads are down by 12% and streaming revenue is up by 24%, which just kind of the I just I'm baffled by CDs. I'm baffled by people who are still uh, purchasing physical copies of music vinyl. I kind of get because it's like an analog experience. But when was the last time you bought music? When was the last time you bought music? Let me know down below in the comments. I want to hear from you. And Apple wants you to hear that they're listening to the fact that you want to unlock your iPhone with Face ID while wearing your mask, which it's a great time to come out with that with everybody now just not caring anymore, which is, yeah, it's available on iOS 15.4 in case you wanted that. And in case you want Google Play games on Windows, Google is actually rolling that out right now to some beta testers. Invites are going out to people who want to play the limited library of games on Google Play games for Android on Windows. It's going to have these games, as you see on screen. I don't know really anything about mobile gaming, but it does appear like beta invites are going out with select gamers in Asia now having access to the client and so they can play Android games on their PC, which I guess this is just a roundabout way of doing blue stacks, which is which is fine. It, it, it makes it easier. It's more native. But what wasn't easy was a man who was trying to smuggle CPUs into China because he didn't walk properly. That's according to Chinese officials who said they stopped the man after observing weird walking behavior and odd posture because he had a hundred and 60 Intel CPUs taped to his body to skirt customs and duties in order to make sure he wasn't going to pay money on that, which is absolutely hilarious. According to the report, the guy had at least an i5 12600KF on his body. So 160 of those would mean he had $42,000 worth of CPUs taped to himself, which is just 
mind boggling. And if there are any higher end CPUs, that total value could go up way higher. So just trying to avoid paying all of them the customs and tariffs. It's just that the, these are all the CPUs that were pasted to that man's body. CPUs nuts, got them. Had to, had to do it. I didn't. I'm sorry, everybody. But Intel's not sorry because they're tattling on AMD, especially with their Spectre mitigation not being as good. In case you don't remember, Spectre and Meltdown were some vulnerabilities that were found in CPUs all the way back in 2018, I believe now. Intel and AMD rolled out some fixes for all of this, but Intel came out with their security team now with Storm, and they said, hey, AMD's mitigation doesn't do it right, okay? They, their fix didn't fix it, so they gotta fix it. And so AMD did fix it, and AMD stuff is now fixed. And you're fixed on this episode of Hot News. Why don't you come back tomorrow for more? I didn't mean fix like spay and neuter anyways. Well, I don't know, you're, goodbye.